I, so the rando seed itself will be a separate video, but this is still meant to be like, you know, to help you guys understand like my decision making at least. And maybe that'll help you with own, with your own strategies, etc. So, let's go. Can <laughs> Bowser keep it? It's a very good one. So, <clears throat> we start with Paracarry. Uh, this is going to be literally the same. I think this is something everyone's pretty used to. These first few checks. So, we're going to be grabbing three items just at the very start I don't care uh this so with homeward shroom you wait for that first bite sound and then you press start to close the menu and it's called quick shroom it's a rando trick because homeward shroom is a rando item and it saves you about one second every time you use Homeward Shroom. Which, you know, it doesn't sound, that's not a lot, right? One second every time. Uh, but one second, that adds up. For how often we Homeward Shroom, that can easily be like a minute. That's 30 coins. You can keep that for now. Uh, I'm not going to buy the letter yet. I don't like buying letters if I don't need to. Uh, ideally, I want to find letters just kind of for free. Artifact. And now we get to do odd key early. <laughs> for a, a free fright jar. <laughs> Very worth my time. Uh, I will buy the blueberries now because they are cheap and I don't want to have to forget about them. Uh, Quizmo, free star piece. Uh, there are 16 Quizmo star pieces in the all entirety of Rando instead of the 64 in vanilla. Uh, they are tied to towns also, so Toad Town has four, but only two at the beginning. The other two you get, uh, later um i'm gonna grab the coins i don't always do this but it is worth calling out like there's a 10 coin block here and then i homeward shroom because i'm going to chapter one and homeward shrooming from the toad town port is going to be faster than walking back up here And you may also be questioning, why aren't you checking Shooting Star Summit right now? Uh, and that's because I don't have any star pieces. So even though there's a check up there that I'm effectively orphaning, uh, it's one check in order to be able to go back and get Merlot checks. And potentially buy out at least Merlot's first reward. Uh, there's a ruins key so I don't need Cooper for the pow block because I don't need a pow block calculator I'm actually doing this check because this is uh, new to the race rule set and it's just a POW block, so we don't have to do it anyway. <laughs> so I don't currently know the scale of Chapter 1. Lol. Um, so I will be hitting the save block here. Just in case fuzzies end up being too high scaled for me to deal with. 
Because we only have Paracarry. Nope. <laughs> um, live stream is 30. I'm actually going to pick one up right now. And a shooting star. The shooting star will be useful in the fuzzy fight if, uh... If, um, they're low enough scale to just die to it. And we found Cooper's shell literally right outside his house. <laughs> so we're going to turn that in real quick. <laughs> Voltrum, that's never gonna get used. So it's a free seven coins, I guess. Special Shake is really good. <laughs> um, let's see what's up here. It's just a Super Shroom. I don't really care. And this is where people get to guess the fuzzy trees. <laughs> Will anyone get it right? Probably not. We still have one person alive. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> uh, okay, so these shy, these fuzzies have five HP. I'm actually going to use... So 5 HP, that actually means they are Chapter 4 scaled. It can only be Chapter 4 scaled, which is pretty nice. Fright Jar is very likely to work. I'm never going to use this anywhere else. Most likely. It's either going to be here or in Chapter 4. So using a Fright Jar here is honestly pretty reasonable. You want to use Fright Jars in the early chapters, especially if they're high-scaled and you can't win the fights quickly. There I could have used a Shooting Star, but for demonstration purposes, the Fright Jar is fairly effective on two fuzzies. And that's just a Mushroom. We don't have a lot right now. <laughs> Feel like you won the lottery. You basically did. Just without much of a reward. Uh, we're going to turn in the calculator real quick. Alright. Uh, I'm going to go up to Shooting Star Summon and check Merlot. Even though... Uh, I don't have very many star pieces. My only other option at the moment is Chapter 3. And I... I'm going to avoid chapter three as much as possible. Okay. This is why we check this before chapter three. <laughs> so that gets us desert access. And checking chapter one didn't really lose me anything. I was going to do it eventually anyway. So saving Shooting Star Summit until after Chapter 1 gets me a better chance of having some star pieces to work with. We have a Magical Seed at 25. Alright then. Uh, not... We have Dodge Master at 6. We have a Repel Gel at 20. We have a Repel Gel at 1. Not terrible. Uh, it does mean Chapter 6 is very, very late in Logic. Which, honestly, I don't mind. So the way that Merlot's shop works, even in race settings, um, 
even though the magical seed is 25, the game expects us to get 50 star pieces to get that item. So, if we don't have access to effectively 50-something star pieces, then Chapter 6 is entirely out of logic. Even if we can buy it with 25, we need the 50 for the logical gap to be filled. Um, there's been a couple letters, but I don't feel bad about not buying them for the Paracarry check. Sometimes the Paracarry check punishes you, but I've only seen a couple letters. So I'm going to hold off on that. Hold off on even considering that. Power Plus. Note that I'm not checking Power Plus right now. I know that I have it, but I'm not looking at it. Um, I'm just not spending the extra time in the menus when I don't immediately need the badge, right? I don't plan on doing fights. I don't need to rebadge at the moment. I can wait on that. Really nice for when I do need it, but that's still going to be a ways off. I don't know how he touched me, but we get to kill them all. And we get a good chunk of experience because this is very high scaled. <laughs> 45 star points for free. See, I don't even mind that. I'll take a spaghetti. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm actually going to get this. I normally wouldn't because it's not required, but I am a little short on money. It's better than a vault room. So what to, something to point out there is optional encounters. It's not always best to run away from them. Like, if you can beat them quickly, you might as well, if it's going to reward you with good experience, like that mole happened to. I'm also doing this set of checks in a particular order. So you saw me come up here to get the star piece on the ledge, so that this cleft would be back to sleep by the time I wanted to come back up here after doing the bulb check. Because if I did the bulb check first and then got that star piece, the cleft would still be awake and he wouldn't be in a consistent position to move maneuver around. Well, there's our second uh, magical seed. Which doesn't really matter. <laughs> there is a fortress key. Uh, I didn't point this out earlier. I really should have. Hello, Toy Train. So when I pick up an item... Like this. This is how I clear the text box. So, I'm clearing the text box with the control stick. Because by spinning the control stick, I'm getting way more inputs. More quickly than I would by pressing buttons. And since those text boxes clear based on any input on your controller, uh, spinning the control stick while picking an, an item up will instantly clear it every single time. Something that, uh, I feel like I probably should have pointed out earlier, but that's fine. So now we get to do Buzzard Skip, which I was demonstrating earlier. Kind of mediocrely. <laughs> See, you do it enough and you, you can pick up on what you find. 
So since I have the artifact, I'm going to turn it in. First thing. Alright, the frying pan is actually required logically. I don't need money. I have an Ultra Shroom. Uh, the game never expects you to find cake naturally occurring. <laughs> so the randomizer actually expects you to find cake mix in the frying pan in order to make a cake. For, um, gourmet guy. You can hear when you get items versus badges. Yeah, it is a very distinct sound effect. So, since I got the frying pan, I know that if I see cake mix, then I'm technically expected to be able to feed Gourmet Guy. Yep. Uh, I don't need multiple snowman dolls. Okay. Here is where I'm going to do something. I'm actually going to check Paracarry. Okay, Paracarry is not good. Bombette is okay. Also not really good, but Power Bomb is going to be better. So since Paracarry's FP for Shell Shot is 5, he's never going to see an upgrade from me. All right. Um, I look very specifically for Paracarry to have vanilla or lower cost on Shell Shot. If it's ever higher, it, I would have to be very desperate <laughs> to take that upgrade. Hello, Quizmo. I'm also keep in mind I'm not checking Power Bomb right now because I'm still not intending on getting in fights. Um, it's not always faster to pick up items by hammering them. It's more of just a... You can. But it's not necessarily faster or slower. Well, sometimes it is slower, but... You can usually hammer stuff without having to move, which is the benefit. So if you want to pick up an item and then immediately move the other direction... I will actually buy this, because I don't have red key. So picking up an item and then immediately moving the other direction with hammer is going to be very slightly faster. But if you're going to be moving the same direction anyway, you might as well walk into it. Also, these checks up here aren't technically in logic right now. Uh, because Logic does expect me to give a yellow or a lemon to Sheik in order for, in order to know the password. So Warehouse Key is, that's an interesting one. Warehouse Key is technically out of Logic until I see a replenishable source of lemons. Which, you know, if you want to keep track of that in your mind, it could be useful information. But not always. Sometimes it might not even matter. But it can impact your decision making to think about logic that way. I will take D-Don Jump. And like I was saying earlier when I was going over my desert routing, I'm going to be... <laughs> going down left from the Poke Room as I pick up the cookbook. Uh, cookbook has the implication of an anti-guy being in logic. If you've seen cake mix and lemon, which at this point we know that lemon is going to be required. 
and we don't necessarily know where cake mix is yet. But it will also be required logically. So it is reasonable to assume at this moment that anti-guy is actually reasonable to have in logic. Power bomb is expensive. Pokies have 8 HP. That means chapter 6. Uh, I'll mark that in a little bit. So that encounter wasn't intended, but obviously I might as well take the information that I can get. Uh, in logic, as in he may have something. He doesn't necessarily have anything, but he's allowed to have something. Okay. And as I pick up Bo <laughs> and Homeward Shroom, I can now enter Shy Guy's Toy Box. So I'm going to be turning in the frying pan real quick. I'm also going a little bit slower than I might normally because I'm trying to make sure I accurately mark things on the tracker and piece things together. Yeah, that's our first letter. Not a huge deal. Although... I think I've seen enough other letters I could technically do the check. But again, I don't really put a whole lot of stock into the paracarry check. It's not necessarily worth going out of my way for at this point. <laughs> I do have the train. Um, it's entirely possible the blue station is going to have cake mix on one of the shy guys that would open up most of the chapter a vanilla cake mix would so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up here and grab this invis block Invis blocks, even though in race settings you can't see them without Watt, there is never a good reason to not get them. It is worth noting that they can't be in logic until you have Watt, but if you're passing by them, there's no reason to skip them. It is also worth noting here that while I'm picking up this yellow berry, uh... Like other items I've picked up, it's not in logic. Because yellow... All of the berries, in order to be logically required, need to be replenishable sources. And this is a one-time yellow berry. So while it does count as the key item, it doesn't necessarily mean that that yellow berry path is going to have something. Or could have anything, rather. Uh, it usually only matters for Blueberry in terms of like, well, I found the Blueberry, but I only found one. Uh, I'll take a Shooting Star. So I could fight Anti-Guy right now, and it would be... It would logically make sense for me to. But I don't really have what I would want to fight him. Hello! <laughs> really, guys? Really? You got the Pulse Stone? You have anything? The Lunar Stone? Dude. <laughs> and it's chapter 7 scaled. How much is out of sight? Two? Um... I should have gotten the Pulse Stone first and left the Lunar Stone, but I kind of want both anyway. And this is a harder, this is a hard fight. The other fight might be easier with random formations.
Uh, okay. Yeah, three Shy Guys. That's a little bit better for me. I don't have an upgraded bow. Uh, but this is fine. I have a couple life streams. I got some extras. I don't mind necessarily tanking one here. Yeah, I'm going to tank one life stream. That's fine. I would have needed them all to do a tackle to live. But I'm probably going to use the snowman doll here. I don't like using the snowman doll this early. But I'd rather not be put in too bad of a situation. That does also mean that Chapter 5 is likely pretty low scaled. So I'm less concerned about the snowman doll. And my first choice for leveling up here is going to be between BP and FP. I'm going to choose BP because I have two power pluses. I don't know how much they cost. But I'm more likely to be able to equip one. Potentially both if I... Yep. Equip the power plus. So we're going to go to pink station. I'm going to leave anti-guy for now. This could very well be a super hammer from the ruins seed. With the way things are going. If I see a ruins key, that means my super hammer is likely in dry dry ruins. Or intended to be in dry dry ruins, rather. I still haven't checked anything in chapter 3. But I haven't had much reason to go there. I'm going to want Paracarry for pink station clips. So... So even though I got it from a hidden block, I would still go out of, I would still go check that. The super hammer opens up so much that I think it's valuable enough. Worth keeping in mind, but going out of logic is sometimes like more rewarding. I am someone that tends to play in logic as much as possible. Um, <laughs> but in this case, I think it would be justified to go out of logic <laughs> with the third ruins key. <laughs> um, I don't have cake. There's actually nothing else here. I should have just homework shroomed. I was a little distracted by what I had found. So I could go into ruins right now. Um, and I think it would be correct to do so. But I don't have a third ruins key. So I am mildly incentivized at the moment because I have every single stone <laughs> to do the chapter three checks because I'm looking for a runes key and I know chapter 2 is mostly exhausted other than what's in the ruins I'm not going to hope for a vanilla runes key when there's at least a few checks here first uh, and I am going right first like, this pathing is just embedded into my mind from speedrunning. But you go right to first, because if you go left, there's an enemy to avoid. I didn't go over this in the chunk of movement stuff, because I feel like Forever Forest is too 
basic. Hello, Fuzzy. Uh, six on four fuzzies. This is chapter three scale. This is vanilla. Okay. I don't mind that. I do want to keep my experience at the moment. So we go left one. Left one. I am trying to spin cancel along these bushes, but it's, it's a pretty precise angle to get. Bulb. Worthless. <laughs> uh, two left of the bulb. Notably, if you don't need to do the bulb check when you come into this room, it's just one right. And then this room here, because we're doing rando, uh, go one right. This is the room that has HP plus and vanilla. Uh, it's not always plus or minus one for scaling. So, for example, chapter... So, Koopas in chapter one. I need to get through the forest real quick. <laughs> Koopas in chapter one go four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven. So, they can skip values. And sometimes the their HP, like for fuzzies, go three, four, four, five, six, seven, seven. So it's a bit harder to tell if you're fighting a fuzzy because they have duplicate values. Okay, that's two letters. Uh, that means I'm incentivized to just buy the third one when I go back to Toe Town. Yeah, I personally have, um, I use a plugin for live split called Speed Guides Live. So when I'm running my rando splits, there's a window that pops up with live split that tells me all of the notes that I have for rando, which means enemy scaling usually. And Speed Guides Live is open source. And you can also find it on my GitHub with uh, some special features that may or may not be relevant to you. So worth noting that I haven't really found anything here. This is actually a rare instance where I will save scum. Uh, I don't have weight, I don't have boost portrait. This minigame, even just waiting for them to drop the item, can be slow if you don't need it. So I'm holding my hand over the reset button, seeing what they have. But I'll take it, it's a life shroom. <laughs> as soon as that item popped up, if it wasn't something I wanted, my hand would be hitting the reset button. Just so I don't have to watch this minigame. Because this does take a little bit. So we're going to be going back to chapter two. I, we're going to be going into the ruins, hoping there's a ruins key there. Oh, there's... Uh, never mind. We're not going into the ruins. I forgot this was here. I'm actually going to finish Toy Box because this is going to be very, very worthwhile if there's a Ruins Key here. Sure, take the cookbook.
Yeah, things like that. I tend to forget what's in the first shop if I don't necessarily need it. But this was a case where Cake Mix actually does come in handy. I actually, I'm going to buy Spike Shield while I'm here. And my reason for doing that is so I don't forget it later because I might want Spike Shield for Chapter 8 Junior. Uh, Chapter 8 Junior is pretty much the only enemy in the game where I would want Spike Shield, but that in depends entirely on what else I come across. But my memory, I don't always remember things like, oh, Spike Shield was in Harry's shop. So I'm just going to grab that now. So I don't definitely don't forget about it. Uh, sometimes, yeah, so sometimes it's faster to jump on the buttons. Sometimes it's faster to hammer. <laughs> and I'll try and show you why on the way back here. Most of the time it's faster to use jump on those buttons. But if my movement is good, there is a route to hitting this pink station switch with the hammer that's faster. And Gourmet Guy has a star piece, which we know we need 25 of. Invis block, don't care. Another... In <laughs> uh, all right. So there's a, the invis block here is kind of like in the middle of this tile. Um, okay. Basically, you can stand in the middle of that yellow tile and hit the invis block every time. If you don't have Watt, that's just your visual cue. Let's see if my movement here is good. So I'm do trying to do one, two, three spins, hammer, hit the switch. So two spins, jump up on that platform, spin, hammer. That is the one case where I think hammering that is faster. <laughs> But usually you'll be jumping on them. Another out of logic berry. But I'll take it. It is worth noting that I will be getting an upgrade block soon. I don't usually pick up Flower Saver, but might as well. To the slots. I don't think I will. Actually. Well, okay, I don't need to buy a letter. It is worth noting that letter was to Colorado. And logically, star pieces from letters. Why did I switch? Uh, star pieces from letters actually do count logically for the star pieces you could need for Merlot. I mean, the slots could give you coins. <laughs> Just like in real life, it could give you money. Or it could summon shy guys to beat you up. <laughs> you know, two different ways that could go. Um, I'm not going to fight Lantern Ghost. He's... This is Chapter 7 scaled. That's actually ridiculous.
Uh, this is also currently out of logic to note, but I am here. And I'm looking, a, I'm looking very hard for a ruins key. And this upgrade in particular, not many people do this. Not enough people upgrade bow. So the reason this is out of logic is because I haven't seen the dictionary and the mystery note. You technically need both, I think. I don't know if it's only mystery note, but I think it's both. And I'm also not upgrading bow for fan smack at ultra. Uh, I'm upgrading bow exclusively for spook. Uh, I can't get that gem and jelly because I need Cooper or ultra boots. Okay. So... I guess I wouldn't have been punished very hard for just going back to chapter two, but... Eh, the more you know. We get to make the long trip. Unfortunately. <laughs> kind of just hoping for a vanilla runes key at the moment. Or a French vanilla, rather. It could come off paracarry. But otherwise, I only have ruins checks. Um... While I'm here, I might... I, I think I'll deliver... Yeah, I'll deliver the letter to Colorado, too. Uh, French vanilla meaning that it's not in the vanilla location, but it's in the same general area. Thanks, Paracarry. Uh, also in Rando, by pressing, uh, holding R when opening your partner menu, you can just throw items away if you don't want them. So if you ever are in a situation where you're like, man, I really just don't want this item <laughs> in my inventory, which I do pretty often. Just throw it away. Didn't get my spin, but that's fine. Second Buzzard Skip of the game, very hype. <laughs> Everyone loves Buzzard Skip. Except for a few people. Uh, so I'm delivering this letter because I want the star piece. That's really all there is to it. I haven't actually seen very many star pieces, and I know I need 25. Now, worst case scenario, I don't get a Ruins Key here, obviously. But I think worst case might be it sends me to Chapter 3. Although having... I have all three Ruin Stones, come on. Old Stone, Lunar Stone, Diamond Stone, and Pyramid Stone were all in Shy Guy's Twilight. with Bo and the train in chapter two. <laughs> so we, we have some back and forth here between chapter two and chapter four. Um, the frying pan was also in chapter two. So, okay, cool. 
I turned an artifact a long time ago. Okay. Uh, so that check in particular, I'm doing two spins and I'm hammering the location of the item before the coffin opens. And because hammer takes priority in, when grabbing an item over hitting an enemy. Hello, Watt. <laughs> uh, it grabs the item instead of hitting the pokey. So I can logically beat chapter four now. Realistically. I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> might have to do some thinking on that one. <laughs> that helps. Uh, ooh, ooh. Do we get a vanilla ruins key? Or are we being told to go beat chapter four? All right, so this, um, this first strike, you can actually buffer, effectively buffer by just mashing partner ability. Uh, you also detonate Bumbet early by pressing the partner ability a second time, and you will always first strike this pokey. I want some experience. Especially if it's looking like I need to fight... Um... General guy soon. I'm probably gonna try and kill all of these fights. Okay, so I didn't wait long enough there. Wombat's hitbox is very bad. Uh, they need to be overlapping, basically. You can't really lead there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I want the experience, man. Cool. still poisoned. I'm going to... I guess eat it and die. <laughs> That's fine. I want the experience. If I can level up off of the third pokey fight, which isn't guaranteed at this point. Uh, it's probably guaranteed. It would have to be only a single enemy, which is unlikely. Although, okay, I can do that. Yeah, that's not far enough. I do want the bomb first strikes. Okay, this works. Okay, so I'm going to kill the Buzzy Beetle. <laughs> this was a very slow check, but the experience in this case actually may be worth it.
Uh, I'm gonna upgrade my FP. Because I am seeing that I do need some FP. Ah. I'll take it, dude. Uh, this is a really bad seed. Power shock is five. I'm actually going to not. We're gonna go, go to chapter five. Yeah, we're not gonna be not gonna be general. Okay, we're gonna go to chapter five instead. We're gonna fight Fuzzipede. Uh, this will tell us the chapter five scale. Last stand is three. My badges are a little expensive, except for Power Plus. So with the hammer, you do have to hit him three times. Hmm. There's no way I can beat General Guy. That's the only thing left in there besides Anti-Guy and Lantern Ghost. So, Fuzzipede. 16 HP. This is chapter 1 scaled. Yo, Common Rider. Thank you for the sub to... That one guy, Anonymous. <laughs> Yo, M4. Technically, we're done with the, like, teaching part. But... This random, this seed is definitely going to teach people lessons. Yo, Gil. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate it. Um. So M4, I think, uh. Lessons in patience with luck. If you weren't here in the last 10 minutes, let me describe to you what has happened. I found Bombette to go to Mount Rugged in Chapter 2 in general. I found Bo and the Toy Train in the desert. I enter Toy Box. And inside Toy Box is the Pulse Stone, the Pyramid Stone, the Diamond Stone, and the Lunar Stone. <laughs> As well as one of my two Ruins keys that I have. So I enter Dry Dry Ruins. And I find Watt. And nothing else. So I have taken Watt and I'm going to chapter 5. Uh, and this is this is uh, Ezekiel. The seagull. The big round burb. And now we get to do chapter 5 stuff. <laughs> Uh, it is worth noting that Jade Raven was also in uh, Chapter 4. So if I find Sushi in Chapter 5, this could be our hammer. I just need Sushi. And we could be in a much better spot for, you know, checks that we need to do. <laughs> hey, it's a smiley face. Do you want to know why we don't pick up that badge? Oops. <laughs> I think it's worth explaining. <laughs> um. <laughs> so what feeling fine does is it makes Mario immune to status conditions. Uh, those status those status conditions include. Uh, being electrified by Voltstrom and use and your invisibility from Repel Gel. So if you have Feeling Fine on, your Repel Gel becomes a piece of actual garbage uh, that makes you dodge one attack at the cost of an item because at the start of your next turn, you will no longer be repelled. So... I would highly recommend... What the fuck? 
not bothering with Boo's portrait if you're trying, or not bothering with feeling fine if you're trying to go fast. Um. So hopefully sushi is vanilla. <laughs> the other thing too, just for post game. Um, hopefully sushi is vanilla. Because if sushi is not vanilla, our option now is to go to chapter three. Yeah, Goon, we're we're doing a rando now, and I'm trying I'm explaining stuff and letting people ask a lot of questions. To like make sure my decisions make sense to everyone. This seed is pretty linear. But thank you. Okay. Yeah, feeling fine against uh, Dark Koopas is probably not terrible. Not a bad idea, but also like... I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna save scum this check. Actually, bow is more damage. Okay. Yeah, definitely standard race settings is recommended. So we're safe scumming this check just in case this chest is nothing. I do have boost portrait, which was leading me to chapter three, but if I can get like the weight or something here, it's more of like a, well, I'm gonna try, right? I'm try and get a little bit more for chapter three or maybe a different direction by doing this sort of kind of annoying check. Um, I can't really recommend emulators too well, but I know that the the Bizhawk with the Mupen core is probably the most well-supported way to play that's not on console. I know most people play play on Bizhawk. Retroarch is kind of the same idea. Basically, you're looking for Mupen as your emulator. We're not taking that. <laughs> Uh, you could use Mupen directly also. Just, this needs to be said that uh, Project 64 is a steaming pile of garbage. And if you, you're you using Project 64, you're probably asking for questions. Probably asking for something to go wrong with uh, Project 64. Uh, Thunder Rage is fine. The main issues with Project 64 uh, are one, if you're on Windows 11. Uh, if you're on Windows 11, it will never work. Uh, it's just outright broken. Uh, and it's a Project 64 <laughs> issue. Uh, but also with specific settings, yeah, Merlo's rewards don't work on Project 64. So you can easily soft lock if you're not paying attention to uh, the settings you have enabled. There are workarounds, but it's might as well not even bother. Uh, VC. Uh, Wii VC is actually the best way to play this game that's not N64. <laughs> However, you can't play Rando on Wii VC. Uh, there's not enough memory allocated to virtual console applications on Wii for Rando to work.
but if you wanted to play vanilla and didn't have N64 or emulator, but could play on Wii, I would highly recommend Wii. Uh, the main problem with, uh, uh, Paper Mario Rando on Wii VC is that Star Rod, uh, the modding tool used for this game, uh, doesn't work on Wii. Whereas I'm pretty sure with other similar games, they don't have that issue. It does work on Wii U. Uh, Wii U carries its own set of issues with this game. Between the dark filter and your inputs sometimes just not going through at no fault of your own. I'm gonna fucking kill someone. <laughs> what the? F Dude. Uh, I can beat chapter five now, but I am incentivized to do Gusty Gold checks. I'm gonna do Gusty Gold checks and then go back. There's not much in Tubba's Castle, but I can actually mostly clear this chapter. So, this was really dumb. Um, still no Cooper, no Lackey. Lackey doesn't really open much. I don't have Cooper. So that's a Tubaki lock behind Cooper. Uh, you can't, you can get there with Paracarry, but it's not in logic and it's also very, very frame, well not frame, but like pixel perfect. So, dude. I mean, I'm not upset by getting the bucket. But, come on. <laughs> See, I'm glad I'm doing these checks. Uh, I'm actually, so I'm doing top floor first, by the way. Because it is faster and it does open up the shortcut for later. Mostly faster to homeward stream from uh, the basement is the reason than it is from the top floor. Uh, Tubba's heart I don't think has any colors right now. So I'm walking up to this clubba, laying down Bombette, detonating Bombette, not opening the shortcut because I don't have super boots. <laughs> uh, going in here. <laughs> Getting zap tap, jumping on the spikes to respawn at the beginning. Watching this club, I missed me a couple times because I wanted to show that. <laughs> For some reason. Let's see if um, the Mega Rush check is anything. <laughs> I mean, I'll take a maple syrup. Well, maybe not. I guess not. Okay. So this is where I check this room. 
if I was doing... If I had a second key and I could go back upstairs, I would have checked the basement first. And then come up here and do, done that check. But... Since I'm going to Homeward's room after not being able to do this check... <laughs> we're gonna leave. Because I don't have super boots. And I still don't have super boots. <laughs> okay, we're gonna not use Chet Rippo right now. Because I want to keep my FP. But we are gonna... Full clear chapter five. Huh. That does mean saving the Yoshis. <laughs> you have asked that before, Goon. So the reason I'm saving the Yoshis uh, every time Every time that I'm entering the forest for the first time with, I don't, it's chapter one scaled, with, um, Watt, then I'm going to save the Yoshis. Because I would rather save the Yoshis on a first trip through when I can than ever have to come back into Jade Jungle. So, unless I really, really needed to take a gamble for some reason, I'm not skipping the, <laughs> the Yoshis when I have Watt. I'm also gonna go out of my way here and take a, I'm gonna double check. That was Sushi, Sushi's okay. Annoying. Uh, we're going to take a sushi upgrade here. So, I want to use the two upgrade blocks in the volcano for other partners. And I have Ultra Stone. I'm probably going to... I probably won't get sushi to Ultra. There's not really much reason to. Water block is... Kind of just good enough. And 2 FP squirt for 6 damage on LP. Actually, 8 damage on LP. Is kind of all it'll be for. Hello, Spear Guy. Um, I see you decided to cheat today. <laughs> uh, he's not supposed to walk that far. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I do this room completely blind. If you want to walk in here, pull out Watt and walk up to the, to the Yoshi, go ahead. <laughs> no judgment on that. Obviously, I don't expect people to know the movement in that room blind. Uh, I, I'll take the Thunder Rage, I think. It could come in handy in uh, J Jungle. Uh, and then I do this tree check on the way back. Easy enough. <laughs> yep. As I said. <laughs> so this is actually pretty important. Uh, the B 
because the randomizer is on English, if you want to first strike these piranha plants, you need to switch to Bombette before entering the room. It's not technically true, but you can't switch to Bombette unless they're on screen or you're in the previous room, or it won't work. So if you were to switch to Bombette in this room, with the Putrids still off screen to the right, then your first strike will never be able to hit them on English, which is what the randomizer is. Uh, and here, I'm actually going to save the Yoshi and immediately leave. And by leave, I mean go back up. Because I don't need the shortcut to be open. Because I don't need to ever come back here. And I can just talk to the Yoshi Chief after beating the chapter. So we're just going to go over here and go to the towards the volcano. Cake mix that I don't want. Super Shroom that I also don't want. It is very likely that this is just supposed to be how I get my uh, Super Hammer. Hello, Power Quake. I'll grab it. I don't always grab Mega Smash, but might as well grab some stuff. I don't think I've checked FP plus cost. It's fine. I'm probably just going to Thunder Rage these. And by probably, I mean definitely. I don't want the money. Uh, the only shops that I haven't been able to check are Booze Mansion and um, Chapter 7. But also Rip Cheeto is 28 coins in race settings. So, still worth checking him when I get the opportunity. Hello. Oh, good. Well, okay, third Tabaki is behind Cooper. <laughs> so, I am waiting on Cooper <laughs> for my third Tabaki. Um, <clears throat> I need Super Boots or the Odd Key to get to Chapter 7. That would be a lot of stuff. That'll be a lot of stuff. Uh, and if you're wondering I, why I switched to Lackey there, I'm preemptively switching to a flying partner. <laughs> uh, which means Lackey or Paracarry here, because they are the next partner that I need to traverse uh, the volcano. But also, when uh, getting into this little lift, it is very, very slightly faster to get in the lift with a flying partner than it is with, say, Sushi or Bombette. So. Not enough that you will probably ever notice. <laughs> but it is faster. Let's see what Raph has. I swear if you give me Cooper. Okay. I lost a few life shrooms in Toy Box. Uh, 
Uh, this next room here also is just... It just takes practice. It's also harder on English. Uh, I didn't go over this in the previous room tutorials because it's fairly straightforward. You just need to spin. And I didn't get my spin out. I probably would have made that on JP. I'm not lying. <laughs> JP, I probably still would have made that with how close that was. Uh, using Lackey here is always slower than just making the cycle. So. I hope that's not needed. <laughs> uh, I hope that's not needed. Okay. I mean, I would, ra I would rather get the Fortress Keys before Cooper. Because Cooper is needed for that logically, and by our rule set. I picked up Defend Plus. I have no intention of ever using it. Because it does mess up with uh, what is otherwise very easy, easy um, peril and danger manips. Just mark the super hammer. clear out Volcano. There's not a whole lot of checks in Volcano. The important thing is definitely the Super Hammer. Uh, there's only actually two more checks in all of Volcano. Um... I'm going to take this upgrade block. I don't always take it, but I am early Ultra Stone. I don't plan on using Watt immediately. Potentially ever. This is a... I want to see what Mega Bomb is. If Mega Bomb is cheap, that changes a decent amount of fights later. Alright, we get a completely useless bombette this seed. Let's go. <laughs> Mega Bomb is still gonna be good if we have the FP for it. But 578 is not the bombette that you wanna see. Just like with the, the other room. Uh, using Lackey from the beginning of the room is going to be slower than just waiting for the cycle and spinning across the room. And instead of jumping off Lackey manually... Uh, Alright, game. <laughs> you switch to Paracarry. Hopefully don't jump off Lackey into the lava. <laughs> Because we need para carry now for flare carry. Yo, Mitzi. I'm gonna try and flare carry from really far away. It never works, no. <laughs> you can do it and overlap it with the Colorado talking, but no. Oh, I didn't even try and get the overlap. Oh well. So we're going to grab, um, I don't need this much maple. Uh, I'll have sushi out for damage, but I have a uh, snowman doll for phase two. And I have a thunder rage for phase one. This is going to be the easiest lava pot of fight. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good example of uh, how to do the Lava Prana fight, generally speaking, but here you go. <laughs> let's, uh, let's enjoy this. You don't get to see this too often, where we completely shit on Lava Prana. 
Just using a Thunder Rage on phase one. Uh, Squirt is cheap enough that I don't mind it expending some FP. And just uh, finishing phase one. So, there you go. That's phase one of Lava Prana. Early on, it's a lot of just making use of items. Like, use the items that the game gives you. Your inventory isn't that big. You can't hoard stuff. Just, if you have damaging items and you get into a fight, use them. A lot of people will hoard their shooting stars or their thunder rages and then they'll just kind of end up in a situation where they need to throw them away so just use them honestly and then we squirt on lava prana and kill it Obviously, not every Lava Prana is going to be that easy, but... So keep in mind, Chapter 5 first is very common. The route that we took to get to Chapter 5 first on this seed... Not very common. <laughs> So, more often than not, you will be doing Chapter 5 first in race settings. We took a very long path to get there. Uh, but that was... Uh, <laughs> definitely weird. We do have to sit through some cutscenes here. But when I get back to Yoshi's Village... Yoshi Village, all we're really going to be doing is talking to... We're going to talk to the Yoshi Chief first. Uh, I don't currently have a cooked item, unfortunately. Ooh. That would have been, ni that would have been nice to have preemptively. But that's fine. We can worry about that later if we need to. All right. So there are one, two, three, four, five checks we're actually going to do before leaving this chapter still. If any one of them is a ruins key, <laughs> I know where we're going. Um, If I get Cooper, I kind of know where we're going. Cooper would be huge. Well, <clears throat> not really. I need, I need super boost for Cooper to be... Well... No, Cooper would still give me a lot of Chapter 1. And Chapter 1 with three keys, even though I would hate dipping into the fortress, it's honestly too good to pass up for that. So one benefit to saving the Yoshis uh, earlier, I get to do the Yoshi Chief check now. And also the reason that I like to save it if I don't finish Lava Piranha with Sushi out, doing this conversation automatically switches my partner to Sushi. And that plays into the place we're going next. So it's right now, Sushi would automatically swap with my current partner. 
Even if she wasn't out. So. Because we did skip some checks earlier in the jungle. Specifically in this room. We skipped the Power Quake check. To do this uh, after beating the chapter. <laughs> Don't need that. And we skipped the checks in Sushi's room. That are not... Uh, that you need to ride Sushi to get to. Of course, we saw the life shroom earlier. But we don't know what's in the tree. And the reason that I do this order... Is so that I can homeward shroom and I don't have to ride sushi. So we're gonna go do some sewer stuff now after checking Ralph. Prologue is pretty tempting. Hello, Ralph. I see you've acquired the mail. Uh, I'm gonna buy quick change right now. Just so I have it for later. Interesting. I only have 31 coins. It's not really worth thinking about. Chet Repo is getting pretty tempting based on badges that I have. Uh, I don't have Power Rush or Mega Rush, but I have two Power Pluses. I have some other stuff that definitely can increase Mario's power. But I don't want to hard commit until I've at least checked what HP Plus costs. Which I might have done if I had the money at the moment. Easy three turn blooper fight. And in these next rooms, I'm going to call out. Something that I think I might be one of the only people that does in races. <laughs> um, I skipped this check to make this cycle <laughs> on the platform. I know a lot of people don't do that. So then I come over here, see what this item is. Very rarely do I actually need to get that. Yo, Allie. It might be. So, I do this check on the way back. Uh, I kind of want the star piece. I need 25 of those things. So, Chapter 4 Scaled Prologue. Makes me think, where is Cooper? Take some money. Um... I'm going to fight Goomba King. Doing it on your first trip here is obviously the best time to do it, because otherwise you have to come back. If you foresee yourself in a position where Goomba King it could be required. Like, I don't hate people that skip this. It's definitely worth skipping occasionally. 
It is a long check. But I would level up off of red and blue Goomba. Um, let's do it this way. And leveling up here is going to definitely help out. Why did this do three? Wow. <laughs> I didn't know Uncharged did three. Oh, no, it makes sense. She's Ultra. I thought she was Super. Uh, I want the FP. Because I am planning around Chet Rippo. And I don't want to restrict my FP too much. Having 10 or 15 is where I typically want to be. Um, four Fortress Keys. Where is Cooper? That is the question. Where is Cooper? Cooper being late would be weird. I'm expecting Cooper to be somewhere around here. With a full clear of the fortress coming up. Yo, it's the Galoomba King. I haven't seen that color before. <laughs> That's funny. I'm just going to jump on him and power bomb. Oops. I also should be hammering him. Easy. See, the thing is, he's never a hard fight. The only slow part about it is the cutscenes. Which, at this point, we're done with the cutscenes. Not terrible, honestly. I do still need money for shops. I'm not upset by an Ultra Shroom. Even if I'm trying to, like, go fast. Doing it this early, that helps with a lot with money. So, we're going to finish up Goomba Village here. Talk to that thing. Unfortunately, Watt isn't upgraded yet. Tracker, please. I clicked on Melody. <laughs> uh, okay. Here I'm actually going to lure the Goomba. You could just take the lower path and then backtrack if you need to. But I play under the assumption that this is probably going to be something. It usually isn't. But I don't think it's worth. Personally... Skipping. Hello. Like, skipping and having to backtrack for. Just go up there the first time. I'm gonna grab this because I don't have a crypt item. <clears throat> uh, in race settings, which this mostly just means... Uh, vanilla gear shuffle. That bush is always going to have a tasty item. And now I'm in a predicament of... Wait, what am I doing? Um, I guess I'm going to Chapter 4 and Fighting General Guy. Uh, this is where I'm going to check. HP plus is 1. That's really good. Power Rush is 2. I don't have enough coins. Uh, and I also haven't used the storm key yet. I don't have a storm key. I thought I might have had enough coins. 
That makes sense. So this is a good enough time for me to... Yeah, that's fine. I personally don't like selling the jam and jelly. Because I like to have one on me. Uh, in case I need it. Especially near the end. But yeah, this is a good enough time for me to go Danger Mario. So we pick BP. He takes away our HP and our FP. I have a lot of BP to work with. I have a lot of really good badges too. Uh, Power Quake is really good. I kind of... Okay. Like, I want... I don't need Quick Change. I want the extra 3 BP right now to put on the second Power Plus, but I don't have it, so that's unfortunate. I'm going to turn in Melody before going in and Fighting general guy. <clears throat> um, I might as well fight anti guy also. He's not gonna be too tough. Lantern Ghost might be a bit more of an issue though. There's not a lot I would hope for here actually from Melody. See, that doesn't... Yeah, that doesn't help <laughs> at the moment. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Doesn't help. It doesn't hurt me. How many... I only have 18 star pieces. There hasn't really been a ton. Okay, we're going to fight Anti-Guy. Uh, I have seen... I have the cookbook. Turn that in. I have seen cake mixes and lemons... Every condition for Anti-Guy to be in Logic has been met. The reason that I have Watt out is so that I can stun him. This mash is very... I don't want to say easy. But it's not hard comparatively to other mashes. In terms of needing to Power Shock stuff. Making very liberal use of Power Shock is going to save a lot of time. Even if your mashing isn't, like, great. As long as it works. Even once. It's usually the correct play. The all rocks. And there's Anti-Guy. So let's see, with the seed the way it is, how cursed is it actually? With how this has gone so far, okay. Could be worse, could be worse. Um, I think I will fight uh, Lantern Ghost actually. <clears throat> I was... I'm doing 8 damage a turn with Mario. Uh, I can Power Shock Lantern Ghost twice. Uh, I think that's enough. Gourmet Guy was a while ago. Dude, jump when I press the A button, please. Yeah, I've already done all these checks. We get Orange Ghost. <laughs> Another... A color I haven't seen yet. There's a lot of colors for these... Some of these enemies.
So he has 55 HP. Actually a lot. For how for power shock only stunning him for like two turns. Kind of painful. And this is what maples are for. <laughs> like I was saying earlier against Lava Piranha, just use items. You have them, use them. Save yourself a headache. Uh, something I haven't quite called out. Let me try and demonstrate here. When Mario is in his jump squat animation, I'm going to tap the A button. So try and like watch Mario and my input display. I'm going to tap the A button to cancel his jump squat. So that he jumps immediately. Uh, that's going to save you about 10 frames at best. Uh, it's called quick jumping. So every, every time you do a jump attack with Mario, if you press A to cancel the jump squat, it saves you up to 10 frames. Uh, and this game runs at 30 FPS, so... You can put together the time save that that is over the course of an entire rando. Uh, but it's not hard, not easy to get used to. Just don't press it too late. If you press the A button after Mario's jump squat, then you eat your action command. Oops. Uh, for mashing, do you mean, Mike? Just want to be clear. Like, for my Power Shock mashing, it's pretty hard to show. Let me get up to general guy here. So I actually, I rest my controller on my leg and I'm basically just with two fingers like this, just kind of like hammering on the, the A button by effectively vibrating my arm, but it's more of like, um, for me, it's like a tricep kind of thing. Just like mashing with your triceps. Uh, at least that's how I do it. I know it's... Some people don't like that. Some people go with a two-handed mash. It really just whatever works. Oh yeah, I have last stand on. I can't take damage there. Um, this fight is going to be very difficult. It's chapter seven scaled and I am not a chapter seven scaled Mario by any stretch. I am doing pretty decent damage. So I want to Power Quake the Stilt guys. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Watt not being upgraded here actually kind of hurts. Um, 
I don't want to do this. I'm going to want to Power Quake General Guy himself. So the thing about General Guy is... When he does his lightning attack... This is... Probably fine. Uh, his lightning attack... Is... Pretty tough to block. So what I'm going to want to do here... I'll just eat the special shake. I should have attacked with Watt last turn. I'm not going to care too much about tanking the life shroom. It's fine. A little earlier than I wanted, but I'm not concerned. I expected to lose it on General Guy himself. So I'm going to use Power Quake here. Because I really don't want to see Lightning. And this can destroy the Bulb. After a couple hits. And once I have the Bulb destroyed... It'll be a little bit safer to bring in a different partner than Watt, who can do a bit more damage. Also, that just does so much on its own. Yeah, so Watt doesn't do great damage. Sushi would do four with Squirt. That's not really worth it. Honestly, even then, Watt is still kind of my best option. But I'm taking a lot less damage with Mario this way. See, Mario can take two bomb throws, but he can't take bomb plus lightning at chapter 7 scaled, so... Man. That is just chapter 7 scale general guy. No, I'm trying to do... <clears throat> trying to do a lot more damage to general guy, and Bo will not do any damage, unfortunately. Sushi does one more damage with Squirt right now than my Electro Dash would. Electro Dash being a piercing move is very useful. Um, I'm actually... I can't kill this turn. <laughs> oh, no. I could have with Power Quake. Whatever. <clears throat> I'll make liberal use of uh, Star Spirit powers. <clears throat> Power Quake also pierces, and it would have done enough. Just not regular hammer. So, general guy, done. <clears throat> that fight mostly came down to Power Quake on the Bulb. Greatly reducing damage while also being able to damage him. <clears throat> Which is something that uh, not everyone knows about. Quake Badge is hitting the bulb, that is. Which you can really make use of. Just to save yourself the potential of taking too much damage on that fight. Hopefully, Ralph has something. Because I don't know what I would do otherwise at the moment. <clears throat> uh, I think Ralph having Cooper is pretty likely. Cooper behind two Star Spirits is... Or a Ruins Key... Cooper or a Ruins Key is what I'm thinking. Um, if he has the weight, that's not good. 
Just because that means I need to go through the forest again. Uh, odd key is also pretty possible here. So let's see. Dude. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Ralph. Um, I don't have the odd key, right? <laughs> Alright, let's go, go give Yellow Yoshi a Yoshi cookie. <laughs> What letters do I have? Rust T, Feist T. <clears throat> um. This is a weird one because I can't skip it. You can usually skip this cutscene, except in the current story state I am in. Uh, I have two Tubba keys. That does get me two more checks in Tubba's castle. <sighs> I am hoping this is something. Just because, dear God... I was checking there for Quizma mostly. Here you go. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's deliver some letters while I'm here. Seeing two letters on Ralph actually spooks me a little bit. So like I was saying early in the seed, uh, letters or star pieces in general require the normal cost of that slot. So our magical seed being at 25 means that Logically speaking, we need access to 50 star pieces. So... It shouldn't be close, even with letters. I'm really checking two things in Tuppa's castle right now. Because <laughs> I've already done Goomba King, I did Lantern Ghost. <laughs> Chapter 4 is actually completely done. Um. <clears throat> well. Isn't this, uh... Uh, oh no, I need to go. Yeah, this way. I was very confused. I thought I was in the previous room still. Alright, third trip through <laughs> Forever Forest. Um... <clears throat> There's only two checks here.
So this isn't normally, like, a good idea. I can't get that. <laughs> um... So if Cooper is at the top of Tubba's castle, that's probably worst case scenario. <laughs> and now that I've said it... Who knows? I couldn't open the shortcut before, because I don't have super boots. <laughs> um... The fact that this is something right now that I need to do is a little troubling. <clears throat> Just gonna slow walk up here, open that. Because if it's not this, I need star pieces. I'm not sure where else I would go. <clears throat> well. <laughs> we have reached, uh... <laughs> <laughs> a position <laughs> this is what we call an ultra hammer first seed We can go to chapter 2 now and beat it. Logically, keep in mind, logically, this is not a chapter 2 clear. Uh, the randomizer logic expects four ruins keys. So even though I am going to beat Tutankoopa, Koopa, it is not a logical chapter clear. <clears throat> Unless the fourth ruins key is inside here. By all means, if you have questions. <laughs> this is definitely the best stream to be asking questions. We actually fought Anti-Guy already. <laughs> we did every single check in Chapter 4. I don't even have Super Boots, so I can't do the cool thing. <clears throat> no, this is currently the only place we can be. Yeah, so I don't have Subaru, so I can't do the skip of the red switch. Alright, that is a logical chapter 2 clear. <laughs> so we're gonna finish clearing out this stuff 
I'm gonna take a watt upgrade at the moment for the extra damage on Electro Dash. Turbo Charge would be really nice to see, but if it's too expensive, then I will not upgrade Watt again. Most likely. I also don't place the third key or the third stone right away because it moves Mario back a little bit. <laughs> and I would rather just place it on the way back in from fourth key. I may never use jump charge, but I may want it. So the game is making me... So you see the placing the third stone actually moves Mario around and it puts him right next to the stairs. This game is making me beat chapter seven and six scales. <laughs> um... I actually want Power Quake on still. I'll probably just put on the... Uh, Power Bounce is good. I'll just put on the Power Plus, though. <clears throat> We're going to hit the save block here. This is a high-scaled Tutankupa. Koopa. Tutankupa Koopa is one of the harder bosses that to be high-scaled. He's never, like, that difficult. But he does enough damage at high scales to be kind of a problem. Pretty, uh, sadly. Yeah, and I don't have a lot of, uh, gear to fight with. So if I can... Turbo Charge is one. If I can get a Power Shock here, this mash is actually technically impossible to fill. Not technically, it is impossible to fill. So that's... I'm not power shocking again. I won't have the FP for it. I needed it to work on turn one. <clears throat> so instead we're going to see a lot of electro dashes. And jump times two. Hopefully I don't miss this. Ah. Okay, he summons the chomp this turn. And then he loses. Again, this only opens up Ralph and one more check. <laughs> We're pretty railroaded at the moment. If this tree at Colorado's camp has Cooper, <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of people started playing uh, Rando and never really did the game fast before. <clears throat> to be fair, that's also kind of like why I'm doing this.
Like, a lot of people can learn how to play the rando quickly without ever speedrunning the base game. I hate that rock. How much money do I have? 20 coins? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, take my stone cap. And I have 48. 20 star pieces. I can flip panels for star pieces now. So we are going to be going to chapter 6. Because Ultra Hammer gave us panel access. And that definitely gives us enough... Um... Dude. Can you not? I'm not going to chapter 3 right now, but I will buy this. <laughs> um, yeah, getting Ultra Hammer to flip panels does give us access to enough star pieces. <laughs> Plus the letters that we haven't bought. That, uh, chapter six is our next location. <laughs> so, let's, uh, let's uh, go. <laughs> to chapter 6 after I buy my magical seed from Merlot. Uh, for panels stuff for star pieces, this mostly is going to come down to knowing where the panels are. Which, admittedly, <clears throat> is probably one of the biggest knowledge checks. If you need to flip panels for star pieces, which does come up, at least you can see where they are, but it's gonna need to come from memorization. And just repeatedly, man, I need panels. I need star pieces. Hello, Merlo. What do you have again? Dodge Master. How much is Dodge Master? Six. So I can't get the Repel. Eleven. Okay. Give me the Life Shroom. And we make our way to chapter six. <laughs> oh, what a seed. What a seed of all seeds. <laughs> hmm. We're not that far off go mode either. Cooper and Chapter 7 stuff, along with the Miracle Water, is technically all we really need. Although the odd, we would need either Odd Key or the Weight at the moment. And I really hope it's Odd Key. we need a way to get our boots upgraded. <laughs> All right. Whatever, we'll see what scale the chapter is by looking at the magic Koopas. 
Chapter 5 scaled. Okay. Okay. I'm not fighting the moles yet. Only because it's chapter 5 scaled. And I just don't have the damage output to clear it immediately. Okay. Thank you for the star pieces that I'm going to be <laughs> getting thrown for the rest of the game now that I don't need them. Out of logic check, but... Always worth doing a bubble berry tree, if you can. Honestly, that kind of makes sense. I don't think there's been a logical yellow berry. At least not yet. I have seen a logical blueberry in chapter six, and I'm pretty sure I've seen a logical red berry. So, there is my odd key. Yeah, I had no way to get to Chapter 7 or the lower sewers without Odd Key. So, I'm still doing these checks because I'm looking for Cooper. Chapter 7 being open, though... And Rip Cheeto. How much money do I have? 48 coins. Okay. <sighs> I'm gonna do the lackey fight. Because I'm over here. I'll pick up Dizzy Stomp. So, the lackey fight is a little out of the way, but when you're desperate for checks, I would never feel bad about like, yeah, I need to do lackey. It is just a pretty nice check to get done. Uh, I'm gonna switch to bow for damage. Chapter 5 scale, it will give me some decent experience, too. It means chapter 7 is chapter 2. And there we go. Uh, generally, it's worth noting that a the Dizzy Stomp will work very likely on flying enemies. Like, lackluster.
I don't know the exact odds, but flying enemies in general are more susceptible to dizzy <clears throat> than most other enemies. Uh, Lackey, I believe, at least. Bloopers. And if he's Cooper, rewarded. If he's not, oh well. Rewarded? <laughs> I'd say that's rewarded, right? <laughs> Alright, let's go... Pay off our good friend Rip Cheeto. <clears throat> now that we can go into the sewers. Only his first six checks matter for race settings. You can tell you're done when he starts asking for 16 coins also. Um, I'm going to check this real quick. Because it's right here. <clears throat> uh, the rest of his items are random, but they cannot be progression. Go away, mushroom. Yeah, so it is very likely <clears throat> he has nothing you care about. He could have Mega Rush. I could be passing up Mega Rush right now, or PFD down. There are definitely badges here that I could be passing up. I'm also going to dip Chapter 7 first. I'm not in desperate need of Super Boots. Just for Chapter 7. I'm also going to upgrade Watt here to Ultra because Turbocharge is 1. So that means Watt in general is likely going to get, get a lot of use in the ending. And the extra 1 damage will be helpful. Uh, so I have Warehouse Key. I'm going to check the shop first. There's my logical yellow berry. Okay. <laughs> How much, uh... Ah, that's fine. I'm not worried about this junior. I'm not gonna heal until after I place Bucket and Scarf. So at the moment, it is just the the search for Cooper. There's a lot of places he could be. <sighs> like, he could technically be in Winding Path, <clears throat> making all of this, like, irrelevant. Uh, Wacka cannot drop progression, no. Nothing Wacka drops can ever be progression. <clears throat> he can still drop high value items like Ultra Shrooms. He can drop Jam and Jelly, Repel Gels, Life Shrooms. Uh, he can drop a badge. 
he wouldn't drop the badge uh, subsequent times, but he would drop the badge the first time. Okay, we're gonna beat up Junior and Monstar. It's low enough scaled, I don't really care about my... about much, honestly. There's really nothing to equip. The HP pluses would be nice if I had more of them. But I have uh, Power Rush and Last Stand, so... Definitely a slow seed. <clears throat> I wasn't sure if uh, Power Bunce was three or something. There we go. Success. Uh, I do want a little bit more FP. I can't justify FP pluses, and I'm going to want more by the end. And I don't really have anything at the moment that I want to equip. Or that I'm desperate to equip, rather. Could be something good. I'm gonna do the bucket and scarf checks and then snowman's gift. And then I guess we're going to winding path after this. Unfortunately. <clears throat> or fortunately, I will have super boots. That does get me a lot of stuff in Tubba's castle. The choice to skip the pebble on up here. Oh no, I have to. I don't have boots upgrade yet. Okay, that makes it easy. <laughs> well, we get to see if... Snowman's gift has Cooper. Yeah. Otherwise, we make our way over to uh, chapter three through the sewers. Hello. <clears throat> Can you, like... Um, 
Where's Cooper? <laughs> hey, Mary, do you have Cooper? Do you have any Coopers back there? <gasps> um... No? Okay. <clears throat> well then. So this game... This seed gave me a lot of star pieces late. Which means I really needed the ability to flip panels. To get my seed to come over here. Okay. Cool. Very, very nice. Alright, let's go get um, our super boots. <laughs> right? Like. Ugh. <laughs> I hate that. Alright, Crystal Berry. I still haven't checked that, so it could be something. Alright, let's make our way back out. I do have to fight Electro Blooper. Sigh. Because <laughs> I need to take this path. I don't technically need to take this path. It would be pretty dumb not to, though. <laughs> Admittedly, going through the forest a fourth time is not on my list of wants. Maybe. <laughs> Parkway is two. I'm taking off power bounce. It really doesn't matter what my partner is here. <laughs> okay, charging it kills them instantly. Uh, worth noting here, in the Dark Koopa room, this room is really laggy. Grabbing the coins to reduce lag is uh, a very good idea. Even if you don't need the money, just grabbing the coins themselves uh, reduces the lag in the room after killing a Dark Koopa. Level up is nice. I don't particularly need it at the moment. No weight this seed. Very nice. I'm gonna do the record check first. Uh, and with this check in particular, uh, look for where the boo is, and when he crosses that last little line on the floor, you can actually stop mashing. See? Right there. <laughs> well, that was Cooper. 
Um, well, that lets us beat chapter <laughs> one and three. And we can beat chapter six. We just need Starstone, Red Key, and Palace Key. Uh, that's so many life streams, I actually just don't need them. Uh, could I use another repel? Nah, not really. I'm kind of, my item inventory is just very good right now. Incredible. Uh, so those boos, after the after he tosses it into the ring, uh, the boots will get thrown anywhere from six to eleven times. Complete R complete RNG. Uh, that was just perfect RNG. <laughs> um, there's not actually. Well, no, I need to go back up because I'm beating this chapter. Okay. The shop has nothing. <clears throat> so I am going to be doing the other two checks in Tubba's castle that required boots. Because of how far I am into this seed, I... I can't go to a location and justify skipping a check. <clears throat> it is worth noting that I, re I do remember lyrics were in the volcano. And I can now get them. <laughs> I'm just going to hope that I don't need to. Because that would be insane. <laughs> so there are two checks in here that I'm going to do. Which means going to the left. Kind of funny. Seeing what this is, I don't care. Uh, and down here. Because there's no way I'm wanting to come back here after uh, beating it. I don't need that. I don't need a cooked item. I also don't need partner upgrades at this point. <clears throat> and because I need to go to the right side now, <clears throat> getting caught is uh, faster than walking back out. If I had the shortcut open, I don't think anyone's tested it. Like actually timed if uh, using the shortcut is faster than getting caught. It might actually not be. Getting caught might still be faster. But now we get to uh, traverse Tubba's castle, use the third key. Come on. 
I'm not gonna bother killing them. I definitely could. <clears throat> but I'm already really low on level anyway. We're also definitely going to chapter one next. Chapter, uh, six. <laughs> Doesn't have that much left for me. Unfortunately, this does take a little bit to get out of here. <clears throat> and there is no cheating the escape. Um, at the current moment, Homeward Stream is actually disabled. I can show that. <clears throat> I guess there's no reason not to show that real quick. Yeah, I can't currently homeward stream, so I have to actually leave Zubba's castle. <clears throat> Yo, star. Everything that I've done today will be on YouTube. Two separate videos, one for the rando, one for like the other going bit by bit over everything, which took longer than I expected. Tech skip. <laughs> Trying to get better at randos, nice. <clears throat> Hopefully the VOD will be useful. We spent quite a bit of time on movement in rooms. Which is kind of where I expected it to be. Change Dodge Master. There. <clears throat> I should have turbocharged. Oh well. I don't think it'll matter. Don't think the turbocharger would have mattered. <clears throat> so for people playing Rando, you probably noticed before, but the heart runs away when its HP is actually at five. Five or less. So whenever you see the heart, you can kind of just subtract 5 HP from what it actually has. Because <clears throat> it doesn't really have that HP. Mm 
yeah, this seed in particular is very, um... A very slow one star. So hopefully, watching this back with a lot of, uh... A lot of the discussion and talk through why decisions were being made helps. This one in particular is a... It's a very, very bad seed. But maybe it's too linear. I don't know. <laughs> so the only items I'm missing are the Starstone, Red Key, and Palace Key. There's no reason not to check Ralph first. Just in case his final shop update is literally all three of those items. <laughs> Although it's doubtful, obviously. <clears throat> I've now full cleared chapter three. I full cleared two, four, and five. Except for vase, which I don't have. Uh, six is missing. Not much. Seven has done almost everything I could. I can still go up to the Starstone check. Uh, so there's no reason for me to leave six without full clearing it. Which means moles and Rosie. So I'm going to do four first because there's more stuff in four than there is left in six. Or not four. One. <laughs> so, Ralph, chapter one. And then six. See, this is why you leave Merlin, Merlin outside here. Because when you talk to him, he goes inside and <laughs> you remember to do your quick change check. <laughs> Especially when you get such late boots. Okay. It didn't matter. <laughs> Ralph, I think you've got a, a lot of mushrooms. Maybe you have something else back there. Maybe you have something else back there. I don't really want a jelly pop. I don't want to get overcharged for a jelly pop. Okay, Ralph. Goodbye. <clears throat> um... For chapter one in particular, it's worth noting, uh, it's a lot faster to get to the fortress through Pleasant Path than it is to take the sewers. I definitely see people take, uh, take the sewers shortcut to get to forever, or I was going to say Forsaken Fortress, um, to get to Koopa Brothers Fortress, but... If you just take Pleasant Path, you, it's actually a lot faster. A lot fewer screens to go through. And they're all very quick. Hello, Koopa. Koopa. I will just kill you all. <laughs> Your Chapter 4 scale is probably not going to be a ton of experience right now. Not as much as you think. For how much HP they have. Yeah, not great. I'm already at the point where chapter 4 skilled enemies aren't really worth fighting. Vanilla star piece. We are going to be full clearing. For what that's worth. I did find all the fortress keys before Cooper, so I'm sure we're going to get a lot of garbage here, too. And Cooper was behind... Yeah, because Record was in... Oh, God. Record was in Chapter 7? And Cooper was behind the Record. 
Oops. I don't have Power Quake on. Good to know. You have too much defense. No reason to use Bombette. Oh yeah, Record was behind Ralph after um, three chapter clears, I think. Ah, French Vanilla refund badge. Well, there's the Star Stone behind three Fortress Keys. Um, that's probably the worst one to see. You want to see them in the reverse order. Yeah, so we're going to clear out the chapter. So refund check first. And then we'll do Bombette in the pit. Alright. There really isn't a good time to turn in the dolly. If I'm being honest. That's probably one of the worst things to see. Because it is out of the way. I'm going to do my badge equips now. I don't really need Dodge Master at the moment. I'd rather have Quick Change. Okay. <clears throat> so... Oops. This is going to be a set of fights that uh, is very fast. And I highly recommend, if you're comfortable with the mash, that this is how you deal with Chapter 1. And potentially a few other fights. But for chapter one especially, it's a very, very easy mash. So if you can do it, I would highly, highly recommend it versus taking the time to actually fight these. Unless you can do it and you can do it quickly. Gotta caveat this as much as possible, like... Spook isn't always the correct answer. But it's usually a very good answer for being fast. Compared to Starstorming this, these fights, at least, Spook is saving across the entire pit, probably like 30 seconds. Maybe not 30 seconds, maybe a little bit less, but it's saving a lot of time because Starstorm is really just that slow, even though it would have been a perfect kill. I have no reason to pick this up. <clears throat> so 
So... Normally, I wouldn't do pie jumps in rando, even in a race. Because you can use paracarry across all of these gaps. But, why not? It is also worth noting that uh, I swapped a Cooper in front of the lock after opening it to overlap the partner swap with the lock falling to the floor. Uh, for that, for pie jumps, I would definitely recommend looking at the VOD later. I th think I went over it pretty well. I do show how um, how the lineup lo works, and there's a very good visual cue for it. The early, early part of this stream was going over all of the allowed tricks in races, and pie jumps are one of them. I probably don't even want this HP plus, but I might as well grab it to have all three, just in case. For some reason, it's easier to manip something that way. This doesn't look like I'll get Mega Rush, and I'm missing two power badges, so I will be a little bit weaker than normal, but not enough that it really matters because power bounce is still power bounce. Oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> oh, you hate to see it. <clears throat> so... I want to use Watt for this fight. I'm missing Palace. What a seed to be missing Palace Key. <laughs> what a seed to be missing Palace Key on. Um. Interesting. Definitely too many bounces. Okay, I could have uncharged that. <clears throat> um, get some BP, sure. I don't have the badges that I need for it, but whatever. I can always equip Super Jump Charge. All right, we're gonna go to chapter six next. Um, stuff in six that I haven't done. Top right path, moles. Chapter five scaled. I need two more damage. <clears throat> Which means I probably should just buy Mega Quake. 
from Ralph, actually. Because that would get me a perfect kill on moles. Okay. Even if it's pretty expensive. I'll take the perfect kill on moles versus a multi-turn fight. Or having to do weird stuff. There's nothing else I need to buy in this seat anyway. So my order for this is going to be... Pop right path first. But I will still buy Mega Quake. Just in case I don't find... my, um, palace key right away. Ah. Because <clears throat> we have to do the machine fight still. Ideally, I find palace key here. Because otherwise, it's going to be a very, very <laughs> rough time doing literally every check on the way to uh, Chapter 7 stuff. Just because, um, obviously not going to leave any stone unturned when I'm missing palace key and palace key alone. Okay. Nice honey syrups. <clears throat> All right, then. For the machine, not everyone knows this, the fastest way to destroy the machine, one hit on the left side, or right side, four hits on the left. So, one hit on the right, go to the left, hit it four times, you're done. The fastest way to do it. So I'm, I guess I'm going to do moles first. That's fine. Five FP for super jump charge is fine. It wasn't palace key that I was missing. I might not be doing every single check right now, looking for it. Palace key is just that bad of a <laughs> item to be missing. Spiny flip kills, just three by default. And now I can Mega Quake the groups of three and four.
Easy fights. With the moles, it's usually about being prepared. If you can one round them, it's not that bad. If you have to do multiple turns, it's when it becomes a real issue. Thanks, Petunia. Okay, the only two checks I haven't done are Water Stone and Crystal Berry. So I'm going to do those after beating Huff. And not even Water Stone, because I can't do Water Stone. But I can... Uh, check the cloud up here and then check Rosie. And I can Homeward Shroom from checking Rosie. Usually if you're using Homeward Shroom from someplace like Chapter 6, you want to do it from as deep in as possible. Which usually means Rosie's room, Lily's room, the lackey fight. Machine fight if you're in a weird position where it makes sense to do that early. With nothing else to be done in this chapter. It's pretty rare, but I could see it being a situation where I want to uh, do the machine fight and then Homeward Shroom from there. Welcome, Bluto. Yeah, this is... Uh, if there's anything you want to see, obviously you can always check the VOD. And I will be editing down the early parts of the stream for YouTube. The rando itself is going to be very just as is. I mean, I don't care. That's a it's either double dip or triple. It's triple dip. I don't really care. <laughs> I don't need it. I was just trying to tornado jump up there for swag. Uh, Huff is going to have a decent amount of HP. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to charge one more time. I can't get as many charges as I want, but I'm going to out of sight on the wind. Uh, because the wind is Huff's slowest attack. And using out of sight means it just ends instantly. Same as if it was like a close call or something. Alright, we're going to try and just kill him. Good. <laughs> if I had more FP, I would have charged one more time. But I would need... With super jump charge at 5 FP, I would have needed 20 to charge a uh, third time there. It would have protected against a four cap. A three cap, I still would have gotten punished, but a four cap is kind of risky. Chancing it on that. In general, that's the kind of fight that you want to do with Huff. Yeah, that makes sense, usually. For like a first time through, that kind of makes sense, uh, Bluto. Yeah, so if you're manipping Peril, you can do that off of the stomps. Out of sighting on Wind is very fast on Huff, and usually you want to just go for a charge fight. If you're doing anything that's not a charge fight... Um, keep in mind things like a cheap spiny surge to clear out the rough tufts or um, the rare, very cheap mega bomb. Cheap spiny surge and cheap mega bomb are usually your best bets at clearing out the rough tufts. 
air raid obviously also works tidal wave could work although very rarely are you upgrading sushi in races uh on average i would say top times finish in potentially under three hours and up to like three and a half hours for like the fastest racers this seed in particular is very bad like really really bad <laughs> so this is um this is definitely an outlier like i don't think i could have had a shot at finishing this at potentially even sub 330 because I'm desperately looking for Palaski now. And my early game had me going everywhere. Which is unusual. Uh, this was an Ultra Hammer first seed, which is very rare. Usually you'll find Super Boots. Uh, before you find your... Before you get your Ultra Hammer but this was not one of those seeds i'm turning in dolly first we're gonna be doing every little thing on the way hoping that palace key isn't vanilla <laughs> okay thank you gumbaria Um, so there are a couple, like, absolute worst cases I'm not going to account for right now. And that is going to be that Lyrics are in the Volcano and required Cooper or Ultra Boots to get. I'm not going to account for that. Um, so if that is the case, you can all say something when I'm done. Hopefully it's not. Because that would be actually absurd. When there is still checks in chapter seven for me to do. Okay, so I'm gonna do what I was showing off earlier and taking this room safe. Except I went too low. Um, does this level me up? I could use... No. Oh yeah, because Spike Tops are Chapter 1 difficulty. Um, unironically... There's two Dark Koopas in this fight. Okay. I want the level. I'm not going to level up anywhere in, in Chapter 7 otherwise. That's unfortunate. Uh, because chapter 7 is so low scaled. So I want the level up now. And I want to get to 20 FP because of my jump charge being 5. Okay, I don't care about Shrink Stomp. How much money do I have? I'm not going to lie, I was pretty tempted to just buy two items from Rip Cheeto. Just in case he has Mega Rush. Or like a PFD down or something. But I can only buy... I can only buy two. Do I have Quick Change on? I do. I don't need Mega Quake. Power Quake is good enough. Put on Dodge Master. And let's make our way up Shiver Mountain. Hoping. Hoping. That the lyrics are not Palaski. <laughs> mm. 
Although, that's what I'm hoping. I'm sure other people are probably hoping that the lyrics are palace key. Uh, levels you always expect to get them sort of passively from the required fights. You might have fights like Shy Guys in Blue Station where you need to defeat them for checks anyway. And you usually will want to use something like a Thunder Rage or a Shooting Star to just kind of instantly win the fight. But yeah, outside of uh, the absolutely required fights, we don't normally do anything. Technically, stuff like Dark Koopas is optional, but <clears throat> opening up the shortcut to Chapter 3 is too beneficial. <laughs> Yeah, and like this, I'm not going to get experience. <clears throat> uh, for most of the pop racers, <clears throat> most... Hello, thank God. <laughs> uh, most seeds we finish around level 8, maybe 9... Probably seven on like the low end. And a lot of the time we are built for Danger Mario. So we do have a lot of power. <clears throat> I'm gonna check the very fast stuff here just in case the badges. Because I do, I would like Mega Rush and PFD down if I can get them. <clears throat> uh, the thing about Danger Mario, though, in Randomizer, I uh, like heal, whatever. It's actually. Never really an issue. Uh, even being at 5 HP, it's never really... Very, very rarely. It takes a lot of confidence to do it, but... Stuff doesn't do enough damage with Last Stand equipped to ever be an issue. Because with Last Stand... Everything's doing half damage anyway. So when I get hit by, like, an attack from Bowser, the most he's going to do to me is four. If I block... Assuming I block it, which I will. <laughs> and four damage doesn't kill me. Which is pretty convenient for, um... Becoming invincible. So, I don't have Mega Rush. Being in peril won't really help me. But it does make the, Bow the Bowser fight a lot uh, more straightforward. When we get to the Bowser fight, I'll definitely be going into detail how it all works. Because he is pretty complicated, admittedly. Uh, the Crystal King fight here is going to be <laughs> um, probably the most straightforward thing imaginable. Yeah, no, Meg Mega Rush could be in Star Haven Shop. This is a seed where I will actually check Star Haven Shop. It's not very often that I would. But for something like that where I get plus two attack technically over power rush it's very worth it which i think a lot of people may not realize uh that power rush and mega rush don't stack in this game 
when you enter peril, power rush is no longer uh, active. Because you're not in danger. You're in peril. <laughs> well, okay. If you have Mega Rush, Power Rush is no longer active. I should clarify that. Mega Rush takes precedence over Power Rush activating. If you have both. Unlike in TTYD. You missed a very crazy seed, Black Tiger. To be fair, I didn't go like as fast as I normally might because I was stopping to explain a couple things, but even then, this is a ridiculous seed. <clears throat> so Crystal King here, um, I am just going to kill him. There's, uh, yeah, not much he gets to do about this. He has 30 HP. But I mean, okay. Hands off the controller. That's Danger Mario. With a low skilled Chapter 7. Even if he three capped me, it didn't matter. <clears throat> uh, last stand is the only defensive badge that I have. <laughs> it's really just that powerful. Like in vanilla, you don't get last stand until you're in Peach's castle. Last stand is very hidden. But it's an incredibly powerful badge. Um, so Dupla Ghosts, we're just gonna tear through them. Junior... I can, I'll, I'll spec my badges for Junior real quick, and I'll explain why I'm doing it this way. Actually, no, I'll wait until I, yeah. Starhaven Shop might have something. If Starhaven Shop has Mega Rush, I'll do it. So I'll do it after Starhaven Shop, yeah. Because I definitely would want Mega Rush if I can fit it on. Uh, and with my experience the way it is, I will be leveling up on Hallway Bowser. Which isn't terrible with Danger Mario. <laughs> so start away real quick. I explained this movement earlier. And when I upload the YouTube VOD, it will be timestamped. I messed up. I didn't jump down. <laughs> Good thing I did it well enough earlier. <laughs> My angle did not go down on the control stick. I still level up on hallway. Uh, that looks like a ho well, all or nothing. So 
So I'll rebadge with all or nothing on. I don't need power quake. All or nothing is two. That's nice. Where is damage dodge? Damage dodge is four. Never mind. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a good time on junior. Well. Okay. I can fit damage dodge on. If I take off. Quick change and dodge master. Uh, so the reason I'm equipping damage dodge is just so that junior. Doesn't kill me with two hits. That is the only reason. The only reason that I'm equipping damage dodge. Because he does four damage blocked for three. Uh, with his basic attack in against Danger Mario. So with damage dodge, it blocks for two damage instead. So I can take two hits, be at one HP, and then power bounce. And the, all of the math in these final fights, Junior, Bowser, all of it. He up, D down doesn't affect it. So... I've seen people make the mistake of trying to think too hard on PFD down. But because last stand rounds down on damage. So if something does eight, let's say Bowser's fire breath and hallway does eight damage. PFD down, it does nine because you're lowering your defense. But last stand, it cuts the damage in half to 4.5. It gets truncated. It's 4 damage. So, don't don't overthink things with last stand and PFD down. It only ever matters if the vanilla damage is an odd number. Would you take more damage with uh, last stand? Which, luckily... Everything here is even numbers. Junior does 8 damage with his jump attack. So 9 with PFD down if I had it. Cut in half is 4. And then dodge, damage dodge takes effect after that when you do your block damage. So I'm going to charge a couple times. and hope for a pretty high cap. He does two. Charge again. I'm gonna tap him with Watt just for some free damage. Tap him again. Hopefully this kills. Five cap kills. Five cap killed perfectly with one E dash. Let's go. <laughs> so, that means we're going into hallway Bowser with one HP. Uh, I've saved my jam and jellies very strategically. I don't sell them for this reason alone, so that I have a free FP heal without touching my HP. Because we're going to swap to Bow and go straight into Hallway Bowser. We will level up here, but that's fine. I'm not going to bother checking the things in Peach's Castle. Mega Rush could be here. But I don't think it's... Important enough. Let me rebadge real quick. So I don't forget for final. I don't need. I don't want damage dodge on. I want quick change dodge master. Power shock hallway for funsies. Nope. <laughs> we are showing a consistent fight. <laughs> a very very consistent fight.
Damn. Nice seven cap. Even with Dodge Master, that's very unlikely. Okay, we can showcase this. <laughs> I dropped the bounce one early. But Bowser's not invincible. So right now, on English, he actually has four defense. Uh, so the way the Dodge Master works, it has a hidden effect. So it makes your action commands easier to do. But something they kind of did to like make it feel like it was making action commands easier was they made it so your power bounces go longer. You have a much lower chance of getting capped on power bounce, meaning you're automatically being kicked off the enemy. So like Bowser here, let me see if I have anything I want to equip. Oh, I'll just equip P down jump. So Bowser here has a very good chance of three capping you in phase one. And it's still a very good chance of three capping you. Dodge Master doesn't help that much against Bowser, but it helps a lot against enemies like Junior. Uh, Junior Troopa can't three cap you if you have Dodge Master on, just period. The worst he can do is a four cap. And even that is pretty unlikely with Dodge Master equipped. So going into Bowser here with Danger Mario, uh, you do have to be confident on your, on your blocks because fire will do five damage if you don't block it. <laughs> but I don't think that'll be an issue for me personally. So we'll get to kind of show how this works. Ideally in phase two, he doesn't give me peril because that makes the, me do math. But phase one, I'm just going to breeze through real quick and do as much damage as possible. So I want to turbo charge up, get my extra damage on power bounces. Block the fire so I don't die. Okay, that's more expected. <laughs> the five cap was very much not expected. So, in phase two, we're actually going to be looking very closely at Bowser's HP to make sure he doesn't heal. Uh, Bowser's heal is determined algorithmically uh, with a little bit of RNG. And it's based on the percentage of Mario's HP and the percentage of Bowser's HP. Because Bowser's HP is out of 99, I tend to just take it directly and say, oh, well, you know, most of his HP values are directly transferable to his percentage of his HP. Like 20 is basically 20%. Uh, and, with and with Mario at 5 HP max, every point of Mario's HP is 20%. So at 1, Mario's at 20%. At 2, Mario's at 40%. So then you take Mario's percentage HP. So say he's at 2 HP out of 5. He's at 40%. So 40 minus Bowser's HP. And if that value is over 25... Bowser then has a 75% chance he can heal. Which is more likely than not, obviously. So we're trying to keep Mario's HP very low so that Bowser will never be able to heal. That means if you're in Danger Mario and you're at 1 HP, uh, you're at 20%. 20% minus literally any value can never be 25 so Bowser can never heal if Mario's at 1 HP. If Mario is at 2 HP, 
once Bowser hits 15 HP, he can start healing. So we're going to be very careful if we don't get peril here from a fire on turn one, that we are going to be trying to keep him above 15 until we can absolutely kill him. Because he's either going to do three or four damage, depending on what move he picks. <laughs> so, Peach Beam away is stuff. Turbo Charge. And he does a Butt Stomp, so he does three damage, and we're at two. So we're going to be using our Repel Gels in order to be invincible. So Bowser can't hit us. We're at two HP out of five. And we're just gonna beat him up and keep him above 15 for now. Okay, that's perfect. Cause I can eat Ash and put him at 16. So he's at 16 HP, which means he couldn't have healed on that turn. If I had done one more damage, he most likely would have healed. Instead, he uh, dies. <laughs> and that's Bowser. It's a pretty oversimplified explanation considering the heal formula, but that's usually what danger does to Bowser. And that's a 332.15. <laughs> the main important thing, like I mentioned, was when you're at 2 HP, to keep Bowser above 15. Just that, that barrier is so important. And what Raven said is technically also true. Um, just a, a heads up, because I know... People are likely to be swayed to use Feeling Fine so that he can't poison you. Um, if you do use Feeling Fine, then when you apply your Repel Gel, it will immediately go away at the start of your next turn, which means you don't get the ex you don't get the two turns of invincibility. You only get the one, meaning you might as well have used Bow for Out of Sight, and it would have been the same thing. Actually, it would have been better because you would have gotten damage with Mario. <laughs> So, if you equip Feeling Fine, uh, you can kind of screw yourself against Bowser. If you're doing a very fast fight. But, yeah. So, that was that seed. And hopefully... Hopefully that helped a lot. I'm going to be editing down a lot of the talk from earlier on in the stream where we went over tricks and movement in rooms and I'll be uploading both as two separate videos so if you want to make sure you see the VODs when they go up they'll be on YouTube uh, we are trying to hit I am trying to hit 1000 subs on YouTube to unlock the ability to monetize videos and also after a thousand YouTube subs, I will do a Book of Mario playthrough, which is a Paper Mario 64 ROM hack that changes all of the text into something that has been run through Google Translate like 30 times. Um, so it's going to be, it's a very interesting uh, translation. <laughs> to say the least. Also, if you were here and you haven't followed the stream, I appreciate it. Um, you know, I play this pretty often, as well as speedrun various other games. So, if any of that interests you, you know, that's cool. And you should follow the stream. Anyway, I am going to be sending you off to JCOG. It looks like... <laughs> Yeah, sure. I'll send you off to JCOG. JCOG is doing no Peach Warp. Uh, technically, world, work, world record attempts. Because his current time is second place after he has de-rusted the category. <laughs> so...
So he already golded Goombario, so you know it's a good run. Uh, enjoy the no peach warp, and I will probably see you all not tomorrow. Tomorrow, by the way, is paper races. I my command is wrong for paper, for paper races. But uh. Twitch.tv slash pape races. Uh, on pape races tomorrow, I will be commentating an all bosses exhibition with uh, Lopez. So, <laughs> uh, follow that channel. It's cool. It's Paper Mario speedruns and randos and a bunch of other stuff every week on the weekends. And then on Sunday, I'll be back for the weekly community race. So before this timer expires, let me hit raid so you can be sent over to JCOG and I can start editing videos. Peace, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>